Hello Curious Coders, welcome to my channel. In this video we're gonna be building a product price tracking service, a price monitoring service for a product that we want to buy at a fair price. We're gonna be web scraping an e-commerce site, we're gonna find a product that we are interested in, and we're gonna be tracking the product price and other related product information. We will schedule our script so it gets executed every now and then, so we don't have to be constantly checking the product price ourselves. And eventually that product price will decrease because of Black Friday or whatever. And if the product price is lower than the maximum amount we want to pay for it, we're going to be sending ourselves an email so we can go and buy that product at a reasonable price. Okay, let's get into it. Now let's first open a web browser and navigate to amazon.com and find a product to track. The Python script is going to work with any product actually, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. For instance, let's search for a vlogging camera the Canon M200. Okay, there's a bunch of matches, let's check the first one, Amazon's choice. When it comes to web scraping, we could do tons of things, but for the sake of this video, I'll keep it really simple. Today we're just interested in the product price, the product title, and the landing image. So for this particular product, we'll get this huge text over here and the price tag. And we're gonna do it by checking the HTML tags. If you press Command Shift C or Command Option I, if you're using a Mac, you'll get the developer tools, which are a bunch of tools on the Chrome browser that let you edit and diagnose websites on the fly. You can also toggle this tool by clicking on these three dots right here, then more tools and then developer tools. As you can see, there's a bunch of tools and onto elements, uh, you can check the complete HTML page that is presented, right? So now I can press again Command Shift C and hover the title, which redirects me to the HTML definition for this title. In here I can see the HTML code as well as the CSS styling and all, but we're just interested in the ID tag, the product title ID in this case. Similarly, I can hover the price and we'll get to the price ID that is called price block underscore our price. And lastly, we'll do the same for the product image. For that, we want to know the tag ID called landing image. But actually, we'll want to use the source link that redirects you to this image. Okay, finally, let's copy this URL just until the product ID. We don't need the rest. Cool, let's back to PyCharm. Let's define URL equals the product URL, title ID equals product title, price ID equals price block underscore our price, and image ID equals landing image. Let's now import requests and perform a get request, r equals request get URL, which will give back the response status code. So we are interested in the HTML content of it, so we use HTML string equals request.text. Okay, let's try it and print out the HTML response. Cool, we got a bunch of HTML code here, but if we take a closer look at it, we'll see this warning inside the body tag, which says, to discuss automated access to Amazon data, please contact API services. By default, Amazon is not gonna make it super easy for us to scrape their website, so Amazon, in this case, is detecting that we're using Python requests and is blocking us. Actually, they want us to use their API services because they have APIs for all sorts of things. So one way to proceed would be to use their services, which we can do, but we're not gonna cover Amazon APIs in this video. Another quicker option is to use Selenium. Selenium is an open source web-based automation tool that basically lets you send Python commands to different browsers. By using this approach, we are mimicking what a user would be doing manually when surfing Amazon.com. Okay, to get Selenium working, we just need to install a browser driver. In my case, since I'm using Google Chrome browser, I need to install Google Chrome web driver. So let me search for Chrome driver download. And in here we have a list of downloads and we just need to install the one that matches our browser version. And you can double check that by clicking up in here, those three dots, then help and then about Chrome. See, I'm using version 85. So I'll click on the version 85 and then I'll download the zip file corresponding to my OS. 
in this case macOS. Ok, I've now unzipped the file and placed the Chrome driver inside my applications folder in my home directory. Back to our script, let me remove the request bit and instead I need to import WebDriver. So I'll say from Selenium import WebDriver. Now I can define driver equals WebDriver dot and now we have a bunch of browsers to choose from like Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, etc. I'm gonna choose Chrome since we've installed the Chrome driver and then inside the parentheses I need to pass the Chrome driver path which is stored in my users path applications Chrome driver. Okay, let's execute the code and we see that a Chrome tab pops up but it is blank. So now we can tell the driver to go get the URL that we want. Driver get URL. Let's run it again. And now the Amazon URL is going to pop up. Nice. Okay, now that we can go get the URL, we want to scrape the product title, product price and product image. To get the title, we'll just use driver.findElementById and we'll put the title ID in between the parentheses. And with that, you'll get the entire HTML tag. So we don't want the entire HTML tag, we just need the content of it. So we'll just retrieve the text information. Let's try it out. Okay, a new browser session pops up. And back on my terminal, I get the product title content. Great! Actually, let me update product ID to title ID to keep it consistent with the other ID variables. Let's remove this. Okay, let's do the same for product price and for product image URL. We'll put the price ID and we'll also retrieve the text. And finally, let's do it one more time for product image URL. We'll use the image ID, but in this case, we don't want the text. Uh, we just want the source attribute. Then instead of fetching the text, we'll use the function get attribute source. Let's try again. Cool. We see that we're retrieving everything we wanted. The text, this huge text, the price tag with the currency at the front, and then as well the HTML link for the product landing image. Now, another thing that you can do is to stop this window popping up every time we run the script. So at the top of our script, I'll type from Selenium WebDriver Chrome Options, import options. Then we can initiate options equal options. We can add an argument called headless. And then we just need to update the driver with options equal options. Let's try it again. Cool, we're not seeing any Chrome tab popping up and we get to the same result. Great. Once we have the current product price, we just need to write the logic to send a notification whenever that price is lower than the maximum price we want to pay for it. So in this case, our camera costs $550, right? So let's say I want to pay $500 at a maximum. Let me define max price equals 500. So I'll say if product price as a float number is lower or equal than max price the float number as well then we'll send the email okay let's build the notification bit of the script there are multiple ways of sending emails using python and explaining sending emails in python could be an entire video by itself um, for this demo i'm going to be using the smtp library so let me import that at the top of our script and now let's construct the message we want to send to ourselves. Let's import from email.message, import email message. Now we can initiate the email message. Then we can send the email, uh, the message subject. Uh, well, we'll put, I don't know, Amazon price tracker notification. Then the message from, it's gonna be variable email address. Message to as well, email address, because we're going to be sending that to ourselves. And finally, I'm going to set the content, the, the message content as whatever we want to send. 
Next, we're gonna open an SSL TLS connection to keep the communication encrypted. We're gonna tap with smtplib.smtp SSL, and then we need to pass in a host and a port number. So I'm gonna be using Gmail service. So Gmail SMTP service is smtp.gmail.com and it runs on port 465. Then we need to log in using our email address and password. For that to work, we need to enable a secure setting in Gmail configuration. So let me go back to Chrome and search for Gmail less secure apps and use this link on my account and in here just click enable once done you can go back to your script and we just need to retrieve the my email password and email address from a secure place in my case i've declared them in another file uh, somewhere where you cannot see them so i'm gonna import that from configs import email address email password and we can use that in the login function you can as well export them as environment variables and import them with the OS module or doing something else. Finally, we can just type smtp.sendmessage message. Let's run it again. Okay, there's an issue, a div statement. So I need to remove the currency first in order to do the price comparison as floats number. So let me remove the currency by slicing from the second element of the string, so element ID 1 until the end. And that should fix it. Let's run it again. Okay, no errors so far. And it's finished. Let me switch back to my Gmail account. And great, here we have our first email. As you can see, the subject is Amazon price tracker notification sent by myself to myself and this was the body message that we set. Now I just want to customize a bit more the content of this email. So instead of just using some random text, I'm also going to be using the product information that we've scraped and we're going to use that info to template an HTML formatted message. For that we're going to type message.addAlternative Inside the parentheses on the first argument, I'm gonna open and close three double quotes as we're gonna be writing multi-line strings. And then a second argument, I'm gonna type subtype equals HTML. Okay, let me paste in a really basic HTML blank template, which defines that this script is gonna be HTML and inside the body tags, we can just define whatever we want to see in our message and we can make that as prettier as we want um, in here you can define just random text you, you can set titles you can put styling you can do lots of things so for this part check out any html beginner tutorial or just copy the same code that i'm gonna be using now so this is just one example out of the many possibilities you have Okay, in here I've defined a title which says your featured product is under max price dollars. Don't miss it out. Then I've declared a bullet list uh, with some product information, the name, the price, and the image URL. Then I've declared uh, an image tag with the source image, the landing image. And finally, just uh, my name and my YouTube channel as a footer. Okay, let's try it again and see how it gets templated. Cool, we have another email. And see, this one has an HTML formatted content. The titles in bold, uh, the bullet list, the image that we've scraped, and links that will help us navigate even faster to our product page. Okay, so at this point, the script is completed. Let me make some changes as well. So instead of writing the entire script at once, I'm gonna be using some functions that will keep the script a bit cleaner. I'm gonna capture this into two different functions. The first one called get product information that will require a driver object as argument. Let me put that inside the function and we'll return a JSON object with this scrape information. So title, product title, price, product price, and image URL product image URL. I'm gonna call the second one send email 
and it requires this product JSON object uh, that we just returned in the previous function. And this one will not return anything. Let me update the variables to use the product dictionary instead. So I'll use product key title, product key price, and product key image URL. Let me also indent that. Cool. Then we're gonna define our main module and in there we'll set the Chrome driver and URL constants. We will initialize the web driver, get the URL, and then call both previous functions. So product info equals get product info. And if the price is lower than maximum price, then we'll send the email. So let me change that as well. Cool, let's try it again. Nice, we received another message just like before. The last thing I want for this case is the ability to run this script every now and then. Imagine you want to check the price of a product daily or every 10 minutes or just overnight. Then if you're running a macOS or Linux machine, you can just use the cron daemon to execute your script on schedule at a specific dates and times. Let me open up a terminal. You can actually check your current cron schedules by typing cron tab list. See, there's nothing there. So let's add one schedule. Let's type crontab-e for edit. And in here, the syntax for that is first, you need to define the schedule. I'm gonna assume that you guys know how the schedule syntax works. If not, just check a basic tutorial. Um, so I'll write five stars for every minute, every hour, every day of the month, every month of the year, and lastly, every day of the week. Then a blank space, and then the command you want your Chrome to execute. In our case, let me go back to PyCharm. It's gonna be this one, Python 3, and then the path to our script. Let's save and close CronTab. Okay, it says CronTab installing new CronTab message. And if we list CronTab again, we'll see our schedule being created. Good. Okay, so if we've said it correctly, we should be seeing emails kicking in once every minute without us uh, running the script. Okay, we got the first one already. Great job. Just to keep it short, I've skipped a bit in time. As you can see, we are now receiving one email every minute. I haven't run the script at all. It just run running my script once every minute. So make sure to change your schedule to be executed whenever suits you. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this price tracking application using Python. By using Selenium, you can scrape any website and extract large amounts of data to process and use afterwards. So stay tuned for future videos as I'll be uploading new fun applications using Selenium. If you are starting with Python programming, don't forget to check the resources in the description down below where you'll learn all the basics and advanced concepts. Anyways, we're done for today. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I'll see you in another video.